It's been 10 years since Capital Steve's died and fans are still curious as to what happened. On one hand, we're told he committed suicide after jumping from the rooftop that was home to the label he was signed to. And on another, we're told Joey Badass, his longtime friend, classmate, collaborator, and pro-era co-founder was the one who killed him. Since there was not a single newspaper that was reported on his death, and out of the very few websites that did talk about it, there was little to no information expressing confirmation that it happened at all. Before the 19-year-old rapper supposedly took his leap into fate, he sent off his last tweet that read, The End and the numbers on the day equal up to the number 47, which were the iconic digits that make up the logo for Pro Era's branding. What was Capital Steve's trying to tell us? And what were some of the things that Capital Steve's was going through moments before he took his leap? Well, sit back and subscribe because we're going to be discussing how his death will go down as one of the biggest hip-hop conspiracies of all time. It's only right we start with the number 47, the number that Steve was so infatuated with that he decided to end his life on a date where the numbers add up to those exact digits. It's the iconic number that makes up the foundational logo to the progressive era, but what does it mean and what does it represent? To understand that, we have to go back even further and learn about Steve's upbringing. Cause I'm out here scrubbing toilets just so I could be the perfect son my mother wanted. My older cousin do with time for a gun charge, the other moving weight got niggas trying to run the point. Courtney Dewar was born in 1997 in Brooklyn to Jamaican parents. However, he was a pretty lonely child since his dad passed away when he was three years old, leading him to be raised by his mother and his older sisters, Tanya and Tamara, who will play a vital role behind the conspiracy of his death later in the video. To battle the loneliness and the crazy thoughts that Steve had about the world around him, Courtney turned to music as a way to express himself. He started rapping at a very young age and in elementary school, Steve got together with a friend named Jakari Jack, who soon went by the alias Jack the Rhymer to form a hip hop group that they called the third kind they even released a mixtape together in 2009 called the yellow tape with them awkward flows and snap rap issues stop all your gimmicks and at the age of only 16, Deez was confident that he could make a living off of becoming a rapper, and it wasn't long before he actually did. Once he began attending Brooklyn's Edward R. Mural High School, everything seemed to align for him. This school was widely known for encouraging arts and music, and they even gave students free periods, or as they like to call it, optimal time activities, where they were free to do whatever they wanted, whether it be to draw, to write, or if you were Steez in his prose, you would cipher up freestyles in the hallway. Got verses in the stash, murderous, you have his pen bursting on the pad. I got him looking nervous like Kirk when he mad. <laughs> That's when Steez made friends with a DJ and now producer, Powers Pleasant, along with rappers Joey Badass and CJ Fly, who would go on to become the founding members of Steez's initiative, Pro Era. Class, I always thought about like, what would I want to do? I would want to make progress in the world. And that's where the most inspiration came out. So I was like, let me just try and fulfill that with my homies. Joey Badass was already making a name for himself via songs he was uploading to his YouTube channel under the alias J-O-V. Steez, quite an amazing ear for talent, approached Badass in the cafeteria one day and showed him one of Joey's videos, asking if it was him. Joey reflects back on this moment claiming he was ecstatic and he was already well aware of who Steez was since he heard about Steez and his rapping ability through word of mouth. The four of them began hanging out a lot more, smoking some of the sweet devil's lettuce, and freestyling with each other almost every day. Although Joey Badass and Capital Steez shared their belief to make it to the mainstream, their spiritual beliefs are really what connected them and the rest of Pro Era together. However, Capital Steez was the most woke of them all and it would lead to some trouble down the line that we're gonna get into later in this video. Growing up in a Christian household where going to church on Sundays was a routine, Capital Steez eventually rebelled against the religion that was taught to him as he grew up and began to dabble with the idea that all religion was based on lies. He began believing that Jesus was actually black and 10 years later, what do you know? He was right. And this is what led him to become interested in Rastafarianism. If you couldn't already tell, Steez was a very spiritual person who was looking for answers about what the world really was, which is very hard for most people to figure out. But things became more clear for him when Steve began learning that he was an indigo after he met Issa Gold from the Underachievers. And for all my people whose third eye is closed, let me just enlighten you real quick. Basically, if you have a third iPhone, then your third eye is closed. Indigo is a term used to describe children and young people who have a very high intuition and are very intelligent. Indigos also usually have a disapproval of authority and after Steve began watching a YouTube series called Spirit Science, he became very aware of his mind and more specifically his chakras. I started astral projecting more and more and I saw deeper into the future and I was like yo, we basically have to create a group of all Indigos. We have to come together, you know, create our, create our music and like eventually we're gonna have to like 
be about our message, which is taking over the government. So I guess on some 47 shit, that's, that's our next step, you know? You can hear some of these themes played all throughout his music, such as songs like Free the Robot, where he talks about topics ranging from the war on drugs and a pending apocalypse. And one of my favorite songs, Vibrating, where he talks about him meeting God. Serious. In fact, I seen God today. We had a deep discussion over Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay. It caught my attention. I chased in, she got away. Now I'm left with pennies and I had to learn the heart. Learning about chakras is what inspires these to create the iconic numbers that make up the 47 logo. The four represents the heart chakra and the seven represents the crown chakra. To even further his creativity, Steve's reworked the design of the numbers to make it look like the Nazi symbol and made it the logo for Pro Era. However, Steve said he did this simply as a marketing tactic, which I found pretty smart. And me being like a wordplay genius, I took the sticker, like SWAT sticker. I'm like, yo, let's make a 47 sticker. <laughs> and I'm like, people are gonna be ignorant, so why not just play with their brains, you know? Of course, a couple of stoners with a knack to spit raps outside of the cafeteria during school lunch weren't thinking of anything devilish as the Nazis were. They were just trying to drop some dope music and gather a following that they can teach about indigoism, spirituality, chakras, and more. However, Capital Steve dabbled a little further than most members on Pro Era were willing to go, and it led to some major problems with the group's momentum. Our spiritual journeys like together, my childhood being limited, my whole life I was a leader. I didn't follow anyone. But when I met him, I knew he was somebody who I could follow because I trusted him, his judgment, the way he thought. You know, everything about him to me was just this man won't lead me to no wrong. Only 10 months before Capital Steez supposedly took his leap to fate off the rooftop that killed him in February of 2012, Steez and Joey Badass were having the most explosive momentum they ever had in their life. The music video for Survival Tactics off Joey Badass's debut mixtape, 1999, that was beginning to get major buzz, had just dropped and fans were digging their style like crazy. And spawn with a knife in the missile fight. Get your intel right, your intelligence is irrelevant, but it's definite, I spit more than speech. It's like six million ways to die, my nigga choose. One, dooms they come and start investing in a few guns. This is how myself and many pro era fans discovered their talent and began to eagerly search the internet for more music from the entire squad. Next thing you know, these guys are getting pushed by major hip hop media outlets such as XXL, Noisy, Complex, and are gunning at the mainstream at full speed. They had a braggadocious, confident swagger with a lyrical ability that was a force to be reckoned with. At the time, things were going kind of silent on the East Coast as the West Coast was dominating the hip hop world. But pro era, along with the underachievers of Flap with zombies were giving people reasons to believe that Brooklyn or New York in general was being put on the map again. They brought back the style of boom bap and made real hip hop, which was kind of missing from the game at the time. This, along with a few jabs at popular hip hop icons, had Steez and Joey Badass making headlines and getting major buzz throughout the world of hip hop. But like they say, what goes up must come down, and this was once again proved to be true once the two front runners in pro era began experiencing a little drama. Joey Badass was undoubtedly the one who cinematic music group focused on the most. He was getting the most press runs, most mainstream collaborations, and was the one the label decided to put more money into. After Capital Steez died, various screenshots were revealed of Steez venting out his frustration with the label not focusing on him. Specifically in some leaked messages between him and one of his entre producers, where Steez claims that he didn't want to go to the studio simply because he has to go through Joey, and complaining that he didn't get the shine he was deserved. One Reddit user claimed that Joey 100% treated Steez poorly, and that Joey only got the shine because Johnny Shipes, who signed them to Cinematic, knew he'd be more of a mainstream catch. Whether Joey realized it at the time or not, Steez was being pushed to the side and it became a huge burden for Steez to deal with. If you listen closely to songs like Emotionless Thoughts and King Stilo, some things might be more clear how he felt about the situation. Steez really laid it all out in his music. And they said that once you found it, you lost your mind. Even some of my niggas done grew apart with time. Truthfully, I needed the space. You're far too kind. This led many to believe that Capital Steez's death was a result of his frustration with the label and the jealousy towards his friend and Joey Badass, and he demonstrated this by jumping off the building that was home to the label he signed to. It also birthed an even weirder conspiracy that maybe Joey Badass was behind all this and he's the one who killed Steez, so he and Pro Era can profit off the fame it brought them. Now, rightfully so, this may sound crazy at first, but this is actually a common thing in Hollywood. Many celebrities who have achieved mainstream success eventually lost someone who they were extremely close to, similar to Eminem losing Proof or Lil Durk losing King Vaughn. It's believed that this only happens to people who joined the Illuminati 
and eventually start trying to get out of it, which was what Eminem was rumored to have tried doing. And it also seemed like Capital Steve's was too. Now, I'm not a believer in this, but this is what the Reddit streets are saying, guys. The family of Capital Steve's also reported plenty of times that they have absolutely no idea what happened to their child or how he died. And it sparked a lot of beef between Joey Badass and the sisters of Steve's. They claim that Joey Badass has been withholding a lot of information, music from Steve's, and claiming that he wasn't donating any of the money he made off the Steve's Day festival he ran, where they were also reportedly banned from attending. Supposedly, Joey Badass claims that it was really difficult to come to an agreement on how to financially go about dropping the last project, as he feels like the family just didn't understand the money aspect of the music business. You can't just drop music for free, everything is a business move, and people have to be paid for their efforts. The more time progressed, the more answers we were given by Joey Badass, and the more questions fans continued to have. In an interview with the therapist, Joey Badass admitted that he thinks Capital Steve's was quote, dreaming, when he decided to commit suicide. In my mind, when he says dreaming, I assume that he was talking about Steve's doing a bunch of drugs. He also mentioned that he believes the reason he did it is because Capital C's believed the world was going to end and the only way he can save it was to die so he can be reborn in the year 2047. And it just sounds so crazy for me to just even say that because it's like, what the heck? But this reveals that Steve's was on a type of time that honestly no one can understand. He was a huge conspiracy theorist who was believed to be schizophrenic and I'm sure all the drugs he was taking wasn't helping his situation at all. Joey Badass had been ridiculed his entire entire career for this and he had to open up about it on numerous occasions in interviews and more recently on his song Survivor's Guilt off his 2000 album which is seemingly his follow up to Survival Tactic off 1999 featuring Steez where he questions why people would even come to the conclusion that he'd do something as wicked as killing his best friend who helped him make it to the top. So 10 years in, no one knows exactly what happened to Capital Steez during the final 24 hours of his life. Although he was officially pronounced dead on December 24th, 2012, many believe his actual death was on December 23rd as it would make a lot more sense to end it on the date that adds up to 47. 